Great. If you can see us, make sure you're saying something in chat so we can hear it. I can hear it. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, guys. Welcome to the Games Tavern Happy Hour, where a bunch of us nerds get together and talk about tabletop gaming news, reviews, interviews with three of the people from uh, the was it uh, Dark Days and Mole Master that just happened on the RPG Short Shots on Saturday and uh, everybody in the tabletop gaming space. So we're glad that you've joined us uh, for the pack show tonight. I am joined by my awesome co-host tonight, Jeff. Jeff, you want to say hello? Hello. Hey, so we have interviews with Laura, Philip, and Alfonso today. Um, kind of excited about that. Um, they are from, was it uh, Dark Days and Mole Master, the RPG short shot that we ran just not that long ago. Uh, and the finale was this past Saturday. So it was a great time. Some of the highest viewed show we've ever had on, on the Games Tavern. So we're excited to have some of these folks here. You're going to find a lot of cool things about these folks in particular. Um, I think you'll like the kinds of things that they, their, their background is diverse and varied and they come from all over the place. So some really interesting, interesting people. If this is your first time watching the Games Tavern Happy Hour, please don't forget to follow us and uh, on Twitch here. And it, it's, it's free. It supports us all here on the Games Tavern. If you have an Amazon Prime subscription, you also get a free Prime Gaming subscription. And we'd appreciate it if you'd use that here at the Games Tavern. Prime Gaming subscribers also get instant access to sub-only emotes, as well as special access automatically on our Discord server. So uh, be sure and check that out when you get half a chance uh, and, and check out the Discord. Let's see here. Hold on one second here. I'm having a little bit of technical difficulties here. Um, so... Um, and remember, you can also check this out typically about 48 hours later on YouTube. And patrons, Patreon patrons also get some exclusive behind the scenes stuff on some of the interviews as well. So that's pretty cool. Um, let's see here. Moving on. Tonight, we're giving away the epic character generator from our sponsor at Overhead Games. The raffle for the package uh, should begin here shortly. I think if you type in, uh, let's see here. Yep, should be up and running right now. So in a few minutes, you'll see a notification in chat. Up oh, there it is. So all you need to do is type exclamation epic and you're entered to win. Uh, so be sure and get those in there. Um, let's see here. Uh, details, let's see here. Contest. Oh, the contest is limited to those in the US and Canada, except Quebec. Cast and crew of the Games Tavern are not eligible to take part and you must be a follower to enter and must be present for the staff to contact you to present the prize to the winner. So you must be on the show to win in order to get, to, you must be watching the show to win when we reach out to you in order to collect your prize. So please do so. Jeff, yes. uh, do you want to tell them about uh, tabletop audio? Oh, yes. Uh, so for everyone, uh, remember that for our music and ambiance and everything else that we use that you listen to uh, in the background for all of our games, not just here, but throughout all of our home games, uh, the games on Wednesday, the game on uh, the upcoming games, the games on Saturday, uh, all of our games here in the Games Tavern uh, channel, we make use of tabletopaudio.com. Um, and we like to give them a big thanks. Uh, you can use Tabletop Audio um, in your own campaigns by going to their website at tabletopaudio.com and choosing from over 240 um, music and ambiance tracks. Um, alter often, they have alternate versions available for Patreon pa uh, patrons of themselves. Um, or if you need something custom, also check out their sound pad and options to create your own custom sound uh, and uh, ambiance tracks. We think so highly of tabletopaudio.com. We are supporters and we think you should as well. Yeah, I, I actually just used uh, the sound pad uh, on the Monday game that, that uh, I run behind the scenes off stream. So it's kind of kind of fun with that crew. Uh, and, and we were using all sorts of fun, fun ambiances. You feel, you feel like you're in the, the location you're doing if you do it right. So it's pretty cool that way. Um, so have you been doing anything cool on the Velcan Weave lately, buddy? On the Velcan Weave? Yeah. Uh, other than slaying red dragons. Yeah. Dragon. 
and you know, single handedly taking down uh, a couple hill giants. That's right. You've got all those super magic power things now. That's that's actually really really awesome. Let's see if you get to hang on to those because that that seems like you you basically almost, can arm wrestle giants and win. That's that's yeah, pretty powerful I, stuff. I almost don't want to really because <laughs> then what? Now I have to go beat up gods just to. Uh, well, I I wouldn't, of course. I'm not. I'm not Quentin. I, I'm not out for myself. I'm out for the, for the the good of the uh, and the light of the world. But, um, but who am I going to face? I'm going to have to face off against like Queen Maeve or something. <laughs> it's going to be uh, <laughs> it's terrible. Oh man, way to bring in the uh, pop reference of the boys. That's a that's a great one. Um, not what well, I was referencing. Yeah, yeah. Well, that that's going to be coming to a head. That siege is going to be coming to a head. I think uh, tomorrow, right? Tomorrow night. Yep. Yeah. So we'll see if you guys uh, manage to save what's left of Brindle as it burns all around you. Um, let's see here. Well, I think it's now as good as time as any to jump into the news. Uh, let's get let's get started with the news, shall we? Oh yeah. You. you... You got some uh did you watch reaper expo over the over the past uh weekend oh not only did i watch it i was there uh thanks for asking though uh, that's awesome that you bring that up it's a great segue so yeah the reaper virtual expo it was it was a fantastic experience i would go again and again and again uh and i think just about anybody who went to it would get something useful out of it they could use again um i think my favorite part was the free the, the free paint classes that you could attend on zoom Okay. Have you ever have you ever done a virtual expo? I I've sat in and I've watched like expos and like you know demonstrations and stuff. And of mm -hmm. course, I watch uh, people play games online all the time, not just video games, but tabletop. Mm -hmm. um, but I can't say that I've actually sat in on it on outside of Bob Ross videos. I don't think I've sat in and watched <laughs> people paint. Um, well, no, I take that back. I have watched some cosplayers put on their makeup in front of the, on Twitch and stuff. So Bob Ross, I love it. Um, no, so these were painters who understand painters, and they they really have did have a. I mean, they've obviously taught things before, and they had some great examples visually that you could see to help you achieve realistic effects with the. The miniatures that you're painting so uh, i took i attended one class but in particular on hair for example and he showed some models with like yeah. you know rippling hair in the wind and stuff like that and showed where the columns of color would be and and then showed the a three color process for for each ripple and and stuff like that as well as a another three color process for the shaded areas and so it, it just raised the game for some i mean it's stuff that when you see it you're like oh i see what they did now that they've said it i understand completely what's going on now and and i may go back over some of my miniatures uh with long luxurious hair and, and touch them up a little more um and and i know i'll definitely you know make decisions on certain miniatures whether i'm going to use some of those techniques again in the future uh for some of the signature pieces when i'm when i'm batch painting like you know, 30 orcs. I don't know that long, luxurious, uh, well, well manicured hair is what I'm going for there. But uh, if I'm doing an adventurer who who has either, you know, he or she has long hair, there's some ways to really make it pop. And, and that's what I'm going to do from now on. Um, I also attended a, a class on sculpting. Okay. And I picked up a few nuances. Uh, I mean, I already kind of do minor sculpting and touch ups for for conversions and stuff. But it was kind of cool seeing some of the ways that they're doing it. You know, so you're it talking, doesn't. You're talking green green stuff sculpting, or um, I you know need a tight. But what I picked up in this case was the the way they handled their tools and stuff like that, um, and prepped their their pre stuff before they sculpted. Um, I mean, need a tight green stuff. It's the same thing. Um, I use that most. Uh, but there's also gray stuff. There's also Sculpey. There's a variety of stuff out there. You can even use a Bondo for certain things, uh, body filler for like when you're working on cars, you can do some pretty cool stuff with that as well. Um, I saw someone using uh, super glue and paint to, to create a water, like a sewage water runoff effect. Yeah, you can do that with super glue. I think you're, you're wasting a lot of perfectly good super glue when you do that. Um, 
It wasn't a very it wasn't a very big one. It was just a little little. Yeah, you you can definitely do that with super glue. I think there's uh, water effects that do that perfectly well. That's resin that'll that'll do a really good job on that too. And in a pinch, you can also use um, gloss, um, uh, hard coat gloss to get a shiny effect that's very watery as well. Um, but that's interesting that you bring that up. Um, but yeah, they, they definitely had some great options there. There was another one for painting faces. I, I thought that was great as well. Um, and then also one of the things I enjoyed a lot there was the D&D Adventures League. They also had the Paizo um, Pathfinder Yep. uh groups as well and it was fantastic um i got a couple games in and you know got to experience adventurous league really as a player for the first time ever hmm. and it was kind of fun um and some then new, some news for adventure league uh later on as well and i think we had some last week that was pretty good so lots yeah. of new stuff coming out for that so i'm glad to see that they are already uh hitting the road with it well, I don't know that they're hitting the road with all of that yet because some of that is is for next season, I think. They're just prepping the, the road for it. But mm-hmm. now they've also broken it into various different things like Masters play and stuff like that too. Mm-hmm. But not only that, but like say you, you didn't get into some of the ones you wanted to play in, um, there were still times to get into some of those games because they had, you know, some of those games had some no-shows for some and – so you could get into a game you know, for a variety of the different seasons if you wanted to try them out for whoever was was running what. Mm-hmm. And they would say, hey, look, I've got two no-shows for this. I can need, you know, it'd be great if I could get two more players. If you're interested, you could come in. So you could just like literally go, you know what? I think that'd be fun. I think I'd get into another game. And boom, you can get into another game right there and have a great time. Nice. Uh, yeah, it was, it was absolutely wonderful. And then I, I just want to say this, if, you know, not that Reaper ever watches us or anything, but the the staff and the volunteers at the reaper virtual expo did an awesome job um a couple times i had questions uh i i hit them up in the in the either the channels or or directly and they answered my questions immediately they were on the ball loved it uh i would definitely recommend that again great um and they had channels for just about anything you needed like various different paint classes various different different uh game rooms as well as just questions and answers and they had a vendor hall that was really cool too so you could talk to the various different vendors i i would say that some of the vendors may have been spending a little too much time in some of the classes or playing games because you'd send them a question and it would take them hours to answer but you know hey oh okay. don't forget at the same time they also had the gen con showcase going on and that's, that's true where, that's true that's i think grant was doing some be. stuff grant ellis who's on yep. the Belkin weave was, was was doing some stuff with that too and that was pretty interesting um, to see that. Uh, but I did not get a chance to go to that. I'll have to hit up Grant and see what his thoughts were on it. But I think he saw it from a back-end perspective. Yeah. Uh, I read a couple of the uh, uh, readouts, and I didn't see anything too exciting that I hadn't already seen or that we haven't already talked about. Um, some of it was a couple games from last year uh, that just kind of got lost in the in the shuffle, of course. Um, but. It's, uh, I think it went over. I think the weekend was a really good success, at least for, I mean, <laughs> that they both scheduled for the same weekend is a little entertaining to me. Um, particularly, uh, that Reaper. So would you say that the Reaper one was more focused on, uh, having people game or was it more, or did it have a larger showcase? Like, uh, I, I gotta say i i don't know um because i didn't count you know heads in every every section i could tell you the channels were were varied and you know they had a a huge i mean obviously probably compared to gen con a huge chunk of their stuff is compared you know about half of the channels at least were focused on miniatures painting miniatures and and modeling good um yeah the showcase didn't have any of that so at least they had that niche uh and i think that's probably where reaper made the bigger impact would be on the non-vendor side um oh absolutely absolutely and then and then from there also you've got uh um hold on one second here i'm not sure what just happened here yeah villas that's the same idea um i was thinking and that's kind of what i was thinking and kind of why it made me think of that when he said when reed said that it took 
you know, hours for, or, you know, time for them to get back to him. It's because they probably were distracted. They, they were trying to pull double duty. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then um, from there, I, I would say that uh, the other half was very easily, uh, you know, a variety of, of Paizo and, and, and uh, Wizards of the Coast games for Adventures League and the, the Pathfinder Society stuff. Yeah, uh, there's no. even some uh, Starfinder Society stuff there, too. The miniatures focus for um, the swag boxes was almost exclusively their uh, their cyberpunk or post-apocalypse stuff. Mm. There wasn't any fantasy stuff really in their swag boxes. I, you know, a couple of us were kind of like, well, I really don't want cyberpunk stuff. <laughs> what, you know, why wouldn't you also create a fantasy option? I mean, obviously you built your, your, your name behind a lot of that too. help us out, you know. Cause they, they have, you know, you buy the, you can buy these boxes that come with like paints and all sorts of other stuff, but then the miniatures that they come with are, are the various different things. So I remember last year, uh, Corey went and he ordered a massive amount of cool stuff. And this year he just, he just like, no, nah, I'm not ordering any. I don't, I don't want any of that stuff. I'm just not, not interested. And I'm like, Oh, okay. Well, that's interesting. Um, you know, that's some good feedback pathfinder. I mean, uh, you know, if, if you're watching uh, Reaper, uh, please consider that, that there's fantasy players too. And we really love you guys, but you gotta, you gotta also take care of us too. It's, it's a convention for everyone. <laughs> he, yeah. Yeah. Um, and it will be interesting um, if that's, if it's a, a, a year. So like, you know, some places like to do year of the thing where they're trying to push a certain genre or something in a period um, in which case you, and you focus your efforts there. Um, particularly when you're coming out of uh, the certain, the bad times and maybe, you know, you can't, you don't want to try to put too many fingers in too many pots. You want to just keep it focused. Some idea. Yeah. Yeah. So Reaper Virtual Expo 2021 was a huge success. I hope that even after we no longer are all stuck at home all the time that they continue these virtual expos because I was really enriched by doing that. And frankly, I don't know that I would have had the time to attend this year at this time or the, you know, the coin to do it at this point. So yeah, uh, it was really nice to be able to kind of break out and see something else and, and, and enjoy it for a while. Uh, I, I think it'd be uh, I think these are real good, particularly if you build them in conjunction with maybe a in-person one that happens months later, for instance, let's say uh, for particularly like the Gen Con showcase, I see the value in that is that they can focus on presenting the different, uh, the different new items. And then people can already have an idea uh, and, and have some eyes on a product part before they go to the vendor hall before they go to the vendors day the uh on when uh oh yeah that's a great idea tuesday or wednesday so that you're not just am i mean as much fun as it is ambling around the vendor hall at gin con when it's as packed as it's been over the last 10 years um the really it, it's almost too much uh and having some idea having you know a really good you know it's nice that you can see the pictures uh, on a website or you can see some other but being able to interact with the vendor um you directly through these showcases or through some uh online time on a weekend months prior doesn't even have to be months prior just uh just that virtual uh opportunity to to space it out i think uh gives us some good opportunity yeah yeah so speaking of of playing games by the way Let's uh, let's talk about the first thing that's uh, that's kind of coming up here. Yeah, the new Pathfinder one shot. You want to tell us about this one? Yeah, we we're just talking about that, and uh, so Paizo has introduced a new type of digital adventure to their tabletop RPGs that they're calling the one shot, as if that didn't already exist. But they decided that's the term they're going to go with, and it's it is exactly what it says it is a one shot um mm -hmm. uh their newest one uh the the first one is going to be for pathfinder so four paizo one shot adventures uh have been designed to provide a single session adventure that will fill roughly three to four hours of gameplay for a standard adventuring party uh each adventure uh though isn't just a single session adventure that you slip in these are pre-generated characters uh, pre-generated story uh, every and it all it all like integrates 
Um, so they make it easy for anyone to jump in the game with everything they need without having to spend time creating. Um, but it's not just a set of pre-generated characters and a story. These They have full illustrations. The characters have background. They're developed. Um, backstories that tie into the story you are about to play. Um, in, in this one, in Sundered Waves, uh, the four backstory members were members of a pirate crew that when uh, everyone got incarcerated, the captain died. But in his... After he died, his ghost or something revealed the location of the buried treasure. Now you're adventuring. Um, so it's a ready-made session without all the prep and the uneasiness that that entails. Uh, Sundered Waves is the first in this line. Um, it is second edition Pathfinder, uh, written by Jason Bullman. Uh, intended to be completed within a single session with those four fifth-level pre-generated characters. Um it can be easily incorporated into various virtual tabletops, runoff of digital devices, or printed out and played at a table. Um, I think it's, uh, it's, it's, I'm kind of surprised that this is a new thing for, for Paizo. Um, I, I guess I don't, I, I mean, I don't run a lot of one shots, but I know that they exist in other, uh, in other companies. That's just pretty cool. I, I gotta say, I'm I've, I'm nothing but impressed with the the work they've put into this. Uh, I think that naming it a one shot is a duh action on their part, <laughs> but uh, you know, hey, what what do you expect, right? I, um, yeah. <laughs> but you know, I'm not sure you know how big the the characters will be, but you know, the characters kind of give a flavor so that you can just sit down with a group of people and play, which is also half the the fun of a a one shot is, Hey guys, let's do this. And let's just play it this way. And you just hand everybody a character sheet. It's a great way to start someone learning to play a game like Pathfinder. So they did, you know, it's got a little more crunch to it, but that's kind of half the fun, right? Yeah. And they do talk about that. This actually is doable at, uh, advent, uh, Pathfinder adventure group meetings. Like this is actually can be used you for use, Pathfinder society, right? You would use mm -hmm. the, uh, pre-generated characters, but, there's some interaction that they go into. If you want to check out the link, get some more detail. But there is some type of interaction between these one shots and your society groups. Nice, nice. Um, next up, we make a big transition from here straight into miniatures. Who are my 40k players? And uh, are oh. you are you checking this out, man? Because this thing is a beast. <laughs> and uh, when when this got revealed to me in the <laughs> When we were doing the behind the scenes pre-production on this, I kind of squeed a little bit. Um, you know, he's the dark master. He's the mysterious shadow lord of Mordheim. Welcome, Balakor, the first demon prince of chaos undivided. Um, you know, this, this miniature is a well-known miniature with a lot of deep lore backing it up uh, for a long, long time. Um the fell deeds of this particular demon prince uh, shaped mankind's history in the old uh, empire and has subjected the mortal realms to the cruelty of his dominion, including in the 41st millennium, millennium right? So uh, there are two options for the base, one with uh, a space marine and another with a, uh, I believe it's a person from the empire. Uh, I think the other, the other one that I've seen done up had a, looked like a corn oh, chaos person. warrior. Yeah. 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 yeah chaos, chaos warrior. Yeah. Um, he, he, this thing is massive. I mean, you can see that the majesty of this miniature and all the details that are on this thing, it is <laughs> massive in scale. So the old model was already considered quite large for a demon prince at, with a 60 millimeter base. And, uh, you can see think, that to the right. I don't even think I scaled this right. I don't, no, you didn't. You didn't that, scale it right because the bases bigger. almost look the same size. Yeah, so. he's even bigger. It's insane. Yeah, yeah. It, when you consider that, like he comes up, probably his shoulders probably comes up to the hips on this guy, if they were stand, standing at the same size, is is pretty intriguing. Um, and then not only that, all the different extras that are on the chains on his wings are just off the charts. Hell, his wings, you know, that full that full spread instead of the uh, tucked in like the older model was. Uh, the the bigger detail on the horns is is great. Um, the chest uh, chaos symbol is more pronounced. Um, well, they certainly painted it that way in this case, right? 
sure. But I, I think in general, uh, his tail looks way bigger and spikier than the other version, at least thicker. Um, and his sword. Oh, God. That sword. Of... <laughs> I'm assuming. I, I don't know. Maybe the sword comes with all the little smoky bits and because it's it built great. into the blade yeah you yeah. paint that on it looks yeah. way better than the old sword that's for damn yeah yeah well i mean all those those cool like arcane effects are are really a signature of what what games workshop has brought to the table uh since the the new age of sigmar and since the fall of of the old empire world they've really at the beginning of that before the world fell they started doing that with the doom bell and some of the the other stuff and then they've just continued it ever since and then also created paint lines around it so some pretty cool stuff nonetheless so i'm kind of curious I, I i i'm more curious to see him next to uh the demon primarch um the uh, the one with the wings uh, uh angron no 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 uh the sanguinius nope 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 the demon one, Nurgle one. Uh, wow, why can't I think of his name? Mortarian? Uh, can, yeah, Mortarian's model. Mortarian's model is ginormous. Um, so I'd be really curious where this stacks up in, in a size comparison with uh, the new. Oh, I'd, I'd say they'd be model. probably on par. Yeah. Maybe maybe his wings may be just a little bit bigger. Mortarian, probably a little bulkier. Mortarian's tall. Like his model is very because he's flying on his mo- on his model. Yeah, um, yeah. So he's, but I mean, like he's like very model height, like model height, considering all things equal, not considering the the base height that goes with it. Right. Yeah, probably the same. Um, what do we got next here? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is one that you you, you know at first we you you kind of thought this was a different faction, but I kind of corrected because I know a little more Necromunda stuff like that. The newer We're, stuff, you know. You yeah, know. yeah, the, the newer stuff. So for any Necromunda ganger, you you should probably know that there is a Water Guild. Now, when you mentioned the Water Guild, I I also kind of got got excited because the mention of the Water Guild reflects back onto something discussed very very early on in the original Rogue Trader Warhammer Forty Thousand rulebook hmm. when they talk about certain worlds they visited where there were uh, water guilds who kept track of all the water and stuff like that uh, on the various different worlds. Well, the Mercator Nautica controls all the water on Necromunda. They, they are in charge of it. So they, they recycle it off of everything out there. So the acid rain that comes down, the waste water from all sorts of industrial processes that may or may not be heavily acidic or laced with ridiculous chemicals, uh, the stuff that goes you know through the toilets, everything, whether or not you know if it the water can be recycled from anywhere and i mean anywhere including out of bodies they're not just going to let a body lose all its water to the the no no water is necessary for life as well as all the industrial processes so they're going to take it from wherever they need to get it it's such a big business that they're more than happy to grab some ganger to help out while taking those giant slosh tanks out to places like bad zones or other places like deep in the hives of Necromunda. So per the write-up, they mention these gorgeous models have a strong alliance with Escher gangs. However, they don't say that's the only ones that could work with them. Uh, in return for ganger support, they're quite happy to send out, you know, these siphoning delegations um, to help out, right? So siphoning delegations are made up of a master nautican, a uh, a siphonite and a subnautican. So the master nautican, I believe, is the, the middle one. The middle one with the hat. Yep. And the the siphoning, or excuse me, the siphonite is the one with the staff. Yep. And then the subnautican is the one that looks like it's in a giant, like futuristic diving suit. <laughs> um, because he is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you know the master nautican is very well equipped, uh, but they don't really get into the fighting. Um, the subnauticans are are divers. Uh, they keep the cisterns and reservoirs of the the various different hives, you know, in good working order. And they still wear their armored diving suits even while they're out of the water. So this guy's stomping around in this ginormous armored suit, um, and they're armored probably for some extremely harsh environments. I mean. That water can't possibly be good. <laughs> I mean, in, in, right? in, in most, uh, there's like the hazardous terrain of the water being acidic or something where, you know, you take damage if you come into contact with it. So, yeah, why not? 
Yeah. And then on top of that, it's probably got to handle anything that may be living in it because if it can live in that, it's probably a pretty terrible beast as it, as it is. <laughs> um, the siphonites they mentioned there, there's a, they, they talk in the, the write-up that there's rumors these staffs can even bleed water from their victims. I don't know if that's, you know, foreshadowing for something in a, in a rules mechanic yet oh, or not. That's 100% going to be the, one of their abilities. Like, it's going to be like the flavor text of how they do damage. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, like you see, he's got a giant, what is that, uh, a needle in one of his hands there. Some kind of like, you know, giant, giant. It, actually, all of them have giant needles on them somewhere. It looks like to extract water from something mm-hmm. um they do say to for those gangs that have to fight with these things uh if you're going up against the subnautica uh, you know they specifically mentioned bringing an ambot might be a good choice i think that's pretty cool um i think that uh i i, I just love the miniatures personally i'm just a miniatures guy but uh from a rules play perspective they, they seem to be quite characterful and flavorful yeah um Definitely, uh, I like the look. Uh, if you go to the link, you can see the art and the arts. Uh, pretty nice little little uh, drawings there that they've done a really well job. Well, yeah, really good job well done job of converting into the miniatures. Um, but we we're not done with Games Workshop. They had a busy week, right? Uh, so next up, uh, we got some uh, Blood Bowl. Yeah. Blood Bowl, the death zone. Oh my gosh. So if you've played Blood Bowl for a long time, you're going to love death zone. Death zone is going to be, it, well, it's the first major supplement to the game. Second edition. They've had a few supplements actually with different pitches and stuff like that too, but they've really upped the game with this particular book. Um, this book is going to help you get a lot more replay value. I mean, Blood Bowl is a great game. You can play it over and over again, but if you want to play it and get even more out of it, this is going to keep it really fresh for you and exciting. So every Blood Bowl coach is going to want this book. Um, it's loaded with lots of great stuff, including new indu- inducements, options for various types of stadiums, unique balls, special match events, and, and, and even more. Uh, so things like mercenary players. Um, these mercenary players are not like the, the star players. They're not as well known, but they allow you to mix things up and, and keep your your opponent guessing as to what you really have or what's coming to the table for that particular game. They're a cheaper option to fill the gaps in your team. Yeah. They're not as good as all stars either. I mean, but they are still great mercenaries to plug some gaps in your line. Right. Um, So it has five broad categories, loads of options for each one. So there's a mercenary for, for any size and disposition of team that you need. Um, And from that pool, you can, you can pick up, you know, all sorts of skills you need, but, it's going to cost you. And, you know, you maybe you want to add some serious punch with the bona fide big guy. We have the stats for that showing up there. So you can see that for yourself. He's a bonehead, a loner. He's got mighty blow and he, he even has the ability to throw a teammate should you need it, which, you know, who doesn't want to throw a teammate occasionally. Right. Yeah. Um, additionally, there's options for various seasons. So you have different like winter, fall, maybe they have, you know, volcano season. I don't know. But with that, they also have various harsh environments, which add even more nuance and fun to your games. So, you know, how'd you like to play in a, in a game where there's magma across the pitch? That sounds like par for the course. Right? Well, I don't know that they have that, but you know what? That wouldn't surprise me, right? No. The cool things like that are, are par for the course. It wouldn't be the first time that I've seen that. Uh, outside of Dungeon Bowl, which is also kind of fun. Uh, this Blood Bowl Death Zone is going to be amazing. Um, they also are including a new way to play. It's called the Game of Sevens. Uh, it's named for the smaller size of teams. Sevens is a tighter version of the game from where I sit. So along with a smaller team, Sevens is also played on a smaller pitch. Uh, and you can see an example in the, in the uh, picture there. Um, the smaller format is going to keep the game very, very fast-paced. Uh, and it's going to be faster to set up and play. So as you're playing your, your different rounds and stuff like that, you'll have some options to go there. So pretty makes, makes me think that they took the idea from rugby. <laughs> <laughs> well, it wouldn't surprise me. Wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, they've got, you know, they got to appeal to, uh, people besides the American football players. So, uh, um, obviously. what do we got next? So, uh, typically we would wait until the end of the month to do our infinity roll up, but, uh, 
with Adepticon uh, coming are normally coming up, this is the Infinity Military Orders Action Pack pre-order that they usually uh, release at their at the Adepticon um, with these pre-orders. So from the March eighth to March twenty second, you can go onto Corvus Belly's website and pre-order the the three items. Um, including a package deal uh they're meant this uh this pack the military orders uh when we say orders we're talking you know nightly orders um so they're meant to invoke a futuristic uh night similar to those from the crusades uh, and the models reflect that chivalric motive and look pretty darn cool i mean you compare to this to the the super hyper futuristic of the uh some of the other models um these definitely bring a bit more weight and heft uh to them uh so as regular sales for these aren't set to begin until april 30th this is the opportunity to get ahead of the game and you get to save a bit of money with the pre-order bundle option so the three items there on the left are all for pre-order um however if you get the action pack and the bikes then you get the padre the 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 uh the loan model for free uh the the knights on bikes which look really rad um i you were talking earlier about you preferred them having more of a at movement you know like yeah i like the action the action thing when they're they look like they're riding their bikes and stuff like that right seeing them pause i mean i wouldn't mind seeing like two sets for each one i mean not just the guy walking solo with the bike but the guy if he's going to be on a bike have him ride the bike yeah it's it's kind of weird because the the model that's shown on the box is different pose than the model that they showed in the picture yeah so uh I'm not so who knows maybe that was an early draw up and the one on the boxes maybe they do look more like maybe they can be easily um uh sculpted uh to to work um but that night on bike and the uh the the padre are both exclusive only to the pre-order this is the reason why i wanted to talk about them now and not wait until the end of the month so if you don't pre-order so if you're into infinity and you don't pre-order now you won't have those two options available uh come april 30th when the military action pack orders action pack goes on sale um so i just don't i just don't get that like from a marketing perspective you know it's a great way to get people to buy stuff but at the same time it's like you have great looking models and people want them. Why not just sell them? Yeah, I, I think it's the idea of a con exclusive. Remember, this is supposed to be a con exclusive. And just because, is it? Just because the cons uh, not is the, the cons not happening, you know, Adepticon got canceled. Just because that's not happening doesn't mean for whatever reason they're still going through with that exclusiveness. Now, is this going to be a forever exclusive? Because that seems really limited. Or just... no, that's what they do. That's that's really? really what they do. Yeah, they do this stuff all the time. Um, <laughs> I love me some Corvus Belly Infinity. That's just the one thing I wish they they didn't do. I wish that if they make some, miniatures, I create some chase rare. Miniatures. Yeah, yeah. It's not. I mean, like you know, it's it's not a chase rare because you've got no no cool guy. You know, you know. When, when other companies do this, they may make a characterful model, but it's no different in terms of tabletop than anything else. Right. But oftentimes when you talk about Knight of Montsi, Montessa and the Padre Inquisitor Mendoza, they're going to have a specific stat line that's going to be unique to them. Mm-hmm. So you're really kind of saying, you know, if you have money right now, then order it and you might get this cool thing that's better on the battlefield than other stuff. It's, it's just not it's just not cool. But gorgeous models. Oh yeah, absolutely gorgeous models. Yeah, um, I, I would definitely play this faction if given a chance. Yeah. Um, and I don't show them all, but there is nine knights in that action, or nine models in that action pack uh, box set. So all in, if you were to get uh, purchase the bundle, you're looking at um, twelve models. Uh, so pretty good start to that faction the knight commander model is spectacular yeah. I, i'm i'm big on that 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 pose is pretty epic pretty stoic yeah 
very paladin. Whoever pulls the sword from this ground will have my sword. And moving on to <laughs> our last. <laughs> yeah, yeah, our last miniature section here. So I we had I think this is the first time that at least I've come across anything that's like big uh, historicals, but I thought this was really cool, um, and that's uh, the epic battle or what Warlord Games is epic battles American Civil War starter set. Um, this is not the only, but this is the start of this new uh, epic battles American Civil War system that war games is pushing out so it is a 15 millimeter miniature um that uh the and the box contains no less than 2400 men uh representing 12 regiments for both the union and the confederacy uh including some terrain pieces uh, uh that come with it if you wanted a quick start historical set this definitely looks to be it um, it's based on the award-winning black powder rule system, you know, the 15 or the uh, 28 millimeter black powder rules that have been period flavor tweaked to uh, submit the battles and the ideologies of American Civil War doctrines and these new 15 millimeter models. Um, there's, uh, if you go to the website and check out the pre-order section, there's lots more coming uh, all over, the, like immediately you could drop a chunk of change and put entire divisions down on the table pretty quickly. Um, and the models look uh, for, for a 15 millimeter model. Um, they do have a side-by-side -side between the 15 millimeter model of this and the uh, 28 millimeter model of their black powder um, uh, system. Uh, and it's uh, definitely really cool. If you're into this type of, I, I, kind of considering it uh i don't it's, know. it's 15 millimeter right because you kind of you yes. kind of messed with our heads earlier because <laughs> in pre-production he, he was making i'm just going to say it, he was screwing with us on purpose just to How watch us kind of look at this thing and go crazy because he said it was eight millimeter to us i'm like that's eight it, millimeter i thought it was eight that's okay. insane i read somewhere that it said it was eight and then yeah. i went to their website and i combed through it it wasn't actually on for whatever reason the actual page that you can purchase these from doesn't say what scale it's in i actually mm -hmm. had to go back to the home page of the rule set and down at the bottom it talks about the scale difference um, wow wow I, i'm just impressed at, at 15 millimeter they, they've entered into a whole nother world let's see if 15 millimeter takes in american civil war because most of it's 25 millimeter or uh six millimeter so it should be interesting to see if this is a uh, this has got some staying power. I think I think they're 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 launching with uh, enough production there, and I see definitely the ground infantry. I see very little in the way of cavalry. Uh, I think most of those they, those they guys have, on horses are actually the leaders of the various different ground groups. Yes, so. they they are all leader on horseback is I think what they call them. But there's cavalry in different boxes. This is just the starter box, but there's also a Union brigade bo box and a cal uh, a Confederate brigade box that come with zouaves as well as cavalry units. Oh, that's going to be spectacular. Yep, spectacular. Okay. What do we got next here? This is I think you put this in just to watch me uh have a song go into my head here. So what's it what's it called? It's called Grease, it's Grease Lightning. Grease Lightning. Uh I, I do like the play on terms from WizKids. Um I think we're yeah, there we go. Um it is the new game from WizKids this year, Grease Lightning, uh where players compete in the Hydra Regatta. Uh, the famous competition between accomplished sailors willing to risk the dangerous waters and hungry monsters to win glory in ancient Greece. Uh, with the, the, the track changes every game, it's a randomized track. So that plus the plenty of dangers, upgrades, um, different power-ups that you can pick up as you're racing along offers quick fun for those seeking the thrill of the race. Uh, it's only four players, which still annoys me and i'm seeing a pattern of that with all the different racing games uh the new one from weird this one i think you were showing me uh one for labyrinth i think that's probably going to be four players too all these racing games are all four players and it's very annoying um but it still looks fairly competitive it looks fun it looks challenging 
Um, you've got the uh, you've got Charybdis there in the middle that you're you're racing around. Um, uh, I think it's gonna it does require two trips around, and you can see that the the lines are not straight. You you've got some deviation going on there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm not sure how the, the gameplay looks because I see all those stackable pieces right there on the above the, the circle there. And I think those get turned over and those actually form tracks as well. Those, so. those are the randomized tracks. So um, the, each piece is laid down at the start of a new game, creating a, a, a new combination. Ah, that's pretty cool. That's pretty yeah. cool. I dig it. So you get a lot of replay value over and over yep. again. Yep. Um, so it's a great game that'll keep you busy um four players for this maybe four players keeps the session time where they needed it to be but uh, i do yeah. see see where you're at though yeah it's something about racing games and four players I, I guess it's just the easiest way to balance it so let's let's jump right into uh the next one our kickstarter roundup so let's yeah. kick that off real quick here so I apologize to everyone. Usually I like to give everyone at least two weeks notice. Uh, this one is set to end within 24 hours, but I saw it and I was like, that's cool. Um, it is a last minute find. Uh, it makes use of space, 3D pieces, and a puzzle type solution to accomplish a fairly unique game. Um, you use you use your perspective and observation to determine if you have correctly matched uh, the patterns. You're not doing a top down; instead, you're doing a side on view up to create these patterns. So you have to build up the blocks. Um, there's certain ways that you can place the blocks up on top, uh, shift them around um, in order to create the the visual patterns. And it any and the two level game setup offers a nice contrast while at the same time, it brings the main board up closer to your eye level when you're sitting at a table, which is really important for this game, because like I said, you need to be looking at it side on. So uh, you don't have to, you know, squat down to try to view it. it the game box, the game itself brings the game up to, to a height. Um, so pretty cool. Um, it's a nice, I liked it. Yeah. Yeah. And very colorful too. Very colorful too. Oh yeah. So, so moving to the next one, which I, I love the title. So <laughs> you've been eaten. <laughs> yeah. New game from Ludi creations. Uh, you play minor, a, you know, pickaxe and all uh, in space, in, in space that is sent into the bowels of the beast in order to mine crystals. Um, it is a maximum two player game, which at first really threw me and I'm like okay I'll, I'll, I'll look further so you either play as the miner or the beast there's options for one player where the beast or the miner can be automated and if you're really feeling froggy you can actually play with zero players where you let the AI mechanics for both of them face off against each other with you just doing the, the, the logistics of drawing the cards and moving the pieces as required. That just sounds like, <laughs> like you moving pieces around to watch TV. You know? uh, it's, it's, it's like, sounds like harder than watching TV. Yeah. It's like playing games, but harder. <laughs> well, it's like, I'm not even playing. I'm steps. so lazy. I just want to move pieces around and, and simulate playing games for the manual AI. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So what's really interesting is mechanically, so you've been eaten is an asymmetric game. Mm -hmm. um, players must balance short-term benefit against trying to gain an advantage for the next turn. Uh, to win, you need to make clever plays in order to corner your opponent into having to make increasingly difficult choices. Now, here's the kicker. Both sides play differently. They don't have the same mechanics. Mm -hmm. So it's not... Uh, it, so it's balanced around this. The minor is playing a dice manipulation a dice manipulation and placement game while the beast player is playing hand management and a drafting game uh in order to uh in order to capture and eat him so so you have two different games in one effectively uh where you're competitive but you do it you get to it in different ways which i think is a really cool idea um just because it's 
uh, you can't always like if you've only played one side you don't know how the other side plays so that first time right you're you're kind of <laughs> yeah anyways so i think i think uh chat just mentioned something that uh i think is really pretty interesting on this one in particular is that uh there's an uptick in in two player games since since the covid True. has come out or since True. covid has come out and from I, the pandemic i mean well, i'm I, not i'm not gonna say that i don't have uh, a an entire set of all the heroes, uh, the the old World War Two or not old, but the World War Two two player uh, uh, game. So, and this also can be a fun date night game. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. I mean, like seriously, you're you're out with your your your, your partner or your, your 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 whoever you're going on a date with. This is a great way to get to know each other. It's it's not grossly uh, it's not grossly complicated. Um, it's fairly simple. And it's just a decision making, right? So yeah, you, yeah. the rules are, are flat out. It just becomes when do you take risks and when do you not? I think what's most interesting to me about this is not just that it's asymmetric, but you have literally two different types of mechanics for two different players in this game, but they dovetail together. Yes. The cards and then the dice, you know, and, and a completely different way of playing for both players, but they yep. both dovetail in for each turn. I think that's exciting. I also like the fact that you can also single player it and be either side. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So there's AI, AI mechanics for both sides. All right. All right. So uh, this Kickstarter does end in 21 days, uh, Tuesday, March 30th for those interested. Awesome. Awesome. And coming up next, a known favorite, the red dragon Inn pub crawl eight. Now, yeah. I'm a big fan of Red Dragon Inn. What, tell us about this one. So I myself own one and two, um, and that's all I've really needed for the most part, but all the rest of them are really cool. This one is a standalone uh, expansion, so you don't need any of the previous ones in order to play it, but it's still an expansion, so it can add to your collection. Um, it contains the newest mechanic, the pub crawl, that allows you to venture forth into new locations to continue the drinking and gambling. Because um, what could possibly go wrong when adventurers do that? So in addition to the pub crawl mechanic, you also get four new characters, Father Farai, Samantha, Lucky, and Phil Startusk. So more good stuff from uh, Slugfest Games. Uh, Red Dragon Inn, of course, has always been popular. I don't, I don't see this not being popular. Um, so I, I'm just kind of surprised they took it to Kickstarter at this point. Red, I mean, the Red Dragon Inn series is is popular enough they could literally just market it at oh, every. Come on, everyone's on Kickstarter now. Uh, and, they, I mean, you're you're not. It's not that you're kicks. Remember, you're not really kickstarting the game per se. It's just. Judging. It's a hype thing. Yeah, I yeah. get it. I get it. But they're, they've done some great stuff and I'm, I'm excited to see them put out yet another great, fantastic product. So it'll be nice to play this one someday. I mean, go look at uh, what was it last week? Um, the zombie game. Wow. I'm really having a the, the one for the Wild West version. Yes. Um, yeah. they're, already, they're already. Yes. They're already over 50 extra models from the Kickstarter because of how much it got. uh backed so oh my gosh that's fantastic <laughs> that's fantastic um all right and then uh let's see here uh last up sure that's last up what do we got so this was one of those uh, i i like looking at um so things to add to character creation when building a tabletop role-playing character there's two things i love randomization and character little character details to give it some some interest that you know that not the type that you're going to just forget instantly after the first session because you know you just don't use it but this is more something to to really add to the uh in character throughout your combat throughout your your daily rituals and stuff it's a new product from roll and play press uh that offers to help with that um this is the roll and play fantasy character kit it is a 168 page book of random tables and content generators. Like that alone sold <laughs> right Yeah, there. I, uh, <laughs> I, I gotta say, like we were talking about this uh, behind the scenes with other cast members uh, yeah. on our other streams on, and I think the Druid magic items with wild shaped quirks really caught Corey's eye. 
Yep. Yep. Uh, he um, plays Elden, the 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 druid from and the Vulcan I, Weave. Yep. He was like, that's pretty interesting, you know. Yeah, it's packed full of customizable origin stories, magic items, bonds, relationships, fighting styles, arcane focuses, detailed NPCs, and so much more. You can see just a couple of the examples. There is more even. Uh, down on the right side um, is the 13 dedicated chapters for all the major RPG classes and fantasy character archetypes. There's a 16th uh, or there's a 14th one that's almost unlocked uh and this still has 15 more days so it hasn't even been out that long um it's very likely going to unlock that so we're expected to see 14 dedicated chapters um i've already i've already got i've already backed it um i like immediately pressed the button as soon as i looked at it because this is stuff i love uh there's another book that i have that is for building uh, kind of background as well but I like this way better because instead of having to read and like try to answer questions you can just randomize it which I love I love randomization I love just rolling a die and being like yep that's I'm going to integrate that into my story somehow um, what, what's so, this uh, Kickstarter running right now uh, what do you mean let like, me pull this up hang on here. I'm pull it up here. Or... it's already got 3,000 backers Yep, with uh, over a hundred and hundred and forty thousand dollars. Fantastic. <laughs> uh, this is their second item from uh, Roll and Play Press. Uh, the first one that they created that you can st- go and purchase was last year, and it it, w- it went for about one hundred and fifty uh, thousand, one hundred and sixty or one hundred eighty, um, and it was for GMs creating uh, like a, a setting type thing uh also an interesting piece there's a link there on the link or there's a link to that also in the link that we posted in chat um if you uh, scroll down it's their role and play the game masters fantasy toolkit um so if you enjoy if you look at this and you're like this looks like something i want to get uh you can also check out that this is fantastic yep. i'm excited to see it um wow Um, well with that, uh, guys, we're going to just head right into our, our next segment. We're going to take our quick, uh, five minute break. And when we come back, we're going to be interviewing Laura, Philip and Alfonso from dark days and mole master, uh, the stream that just, just did their finale and, uh, seeing what they're going to be up to next and talking to a little bit about who they are and and finding out more about them. So it's going to be an exciting time. See you guys soon. Thanks, everyone.
and uh, <laughs> we'll let that happen. Uh, guys, yeah. are, are we getting anything here? Uh, I'm thinking, I think the sound's been fixed. Hold on one second. Please confirm. Oh, great, awesome chat. Okay. Yep, there we go. Fixed. And then uh, a quick shuffle around of faces should should fix uh, Phil and Alfonso here. Uh, <laughs> I'll let the tech goblins do that, but I won't stop. So, Laura, you were you were responding about how uh, how the pandemic actually made it difficult to play games, but you looked at the streaming as an opportunity to not only play games, but because you had watched Critical Role as as your entry point into role playing games, you thought streaming was a great way to play some more games, if if I understand correctly. Yeah, it's specifically in a format that other people could enjoy. And especially being an actor, a voice actor like I am, I thought that was that was great because that's what I aim to do anyway. So why not have one giant improv session to do that for other people? Mm -hmm. Outstanding. Outstanding. What about you, Alfonso? Um, similar to Phil, I met Mac in uh, a local gaming store uh that's when i was just starting out in the tabletop in the tabletop uh world and uh he introduced me to the discord and after joining i saw that they were looking that you guys were looking for you're doing casting calls so i said this is an opportunity i always wanted to stream let's try it out and it's been great ever since and would you say that uh, was it was it for for all three of you guys, uh, Phil? I mean, you had mentioned Phil. I'm sorry because I, I think your your audio was cut off too. You had mentioned you had come back in from uh, you just moved into town and you caught Anna at a at a game store yeah. and then we had made a joke about you being a very large imposing man <laughs> staring the daylights out Anna potentially, but but <laughs> it, it 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 wasn't that bad, but. And, and believe it or not, Anna's Anna's very dangerous. You don't want to get into a. <laughs> but no, I, I don't think I would want to. At yeah, all. <laughs> yeah. Um, but none, nonetheless, you've got you know these different ways that you guys kind of got introduced to us. Now that you've done it, and Alfonso, I think you've done it more than once with us now. Um, yeah, um, I think Mo three. Master was my third. Yeah, Mo yeah, Master your was third, my third one. And and at that point, yeah. like you, we're, we're sold on you, buddy. Don't worry. <laughs> but uh, you know as it, from from your perspectives, after you've done it now and you've done this, looking back, is it what you thought it would be, or is it is it kind of completely different? Oof. For me, it was um, it was simultaneously a lot more laid back than I thought it was going to be, but also moved a lot faster than I thought it was going to. So I was like, oh, cool. This is you know my comfort zone playing D and D, but uh, I got to keep moving. So it it was. A learning experience. When you say keep moving, what do you mean? Just the pace of everything, like compared to, you know, the the games I play in regularly, or even my own homebrew game that I DM. The the pace of the action and the narrative both just have to go faster by necessity, uh, for something as short as Mole Master. Um, so yeah, just learning to think on my toes a little more. Yeah, what, one thing I will say that that streaming will do is if you're good at streaming, you're going to be really awesome at tabletop games because everyone else is going to move a lot slower than you will in terms of anticipating your next move, understanding your dialogue that you're going to have with an NPC. You're there to, you're going to actually do things probably more realistically than you would at the tabletop when you're not under a time crunch of, Hey, the episode ends at this time. Well, if you're not done, then you got to wait till next episode. And, you know, we're not scripted at all. So everything, you know, you've got to figure stuff out and hit those beats at a certain reasonable pace or you're going to be on, you're, you're just not going to finish it off in that show, you know, so it's just one of those tight moments. What about you, Philip? Um, it's kind of, kind of like what, um, what I was saying. It's a completely different pacing of the game. Mm -hmm. um, like, yeah, I, I run a campaign here uh, locally for, on Wednesdays. And we'll end up spending half hour, 45 minutes on a complete side note conversation and then come back to the game. Whereas this, you just, you keep going, you keep going, try to think two or three turns ahead of what you're going to do next. It's just a completely different pacing to the game. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, did you, uh, did you find it to be too, did any of you find it to be too fast paced? 
No, not at all. No. no. Not not really. Like at first I was tempted to say it was, but I it, I got used to it after a while. Yeah, I saw you starting to fall fall, you know, just kind of find your groove by episode 3. Mm-hmm. Uh you were you were kind of kind of rolling rolling pretty good with it. Alfonso, from your perspective, what was it like for you? Uh well, the the main the main thing was yes the pacing you play in your home games you spend half an hour talking about a rat that ran ran across someone's feet and it has <laughs> nothing to do with the story um but uh overall uh the experience is extremely different guys you look and you watch streamers but it's something completely different being in the stream being experiencing it firsthand yeah do you did was there any surprises in terms of what you guys experienced uh, coming in like this? Because I know we do things a certain way, and and you know some other groups may do it slightly different. But at the end of the day, we all have to make a production. But sometimes people come in and they're like, "Oh, it's completely different than I thought." What was it for you guys? Any surprises? Mm. No, not not really. I mean, I've watched several different groups play on stream um and so they all have their little differences so going into this i was kind of expecting it to be different than the ones i've seen mm-hmm. um and as with this having actually been the first time i've actually ever streamed doing it i was kind of just keeping an open mind and waiting to see how everything flowed mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me it wasn't i wasn't really surprised except just briefly like when everyone introduced their characters like you got a a little sense of how everybody played and and then I was like oh so the party's gonna be like this I see (laughs) (laughs) well I mean that's especially when you come together the way that we do for for some of these streams you're getting to know people and it's sink or swim in some of these cases too right you guys all swam got along swimmingly actually it was like one of the best groups we've ever run so um yeah now, going back to something that you said earlier, Philip, you mentioned that you had just gotten back from Korea. Um, yes. And that's because you're you're an active duty army guy who's about to retire. Yes, I am. Congratulations yep. on, on making <laughs> it uh, over 20 years. How many years did you get in? So, uh, a couple more weeks. I'll be at 22 years. 22 years. That's a that's a long time for anyone, my friend. Long yes, it is. <laughs> and you, you must be looking forward to that. I'm definitely looking forward to retirement. Um, it's been a long 20 plus years, but I definitely wouldn't change it for anything either. A lot of good experiences, met a lot of great people along the way. Um, But it's time to, time to move on to the next chapter. So. Outstanding. And Alfonso, we just discovered this because we were talking (laughs) about that because, because Laura's got her national guard shirt. Laura, Laura, you're in the national guard too, right? Yep. New Mexico 44th army band. And you play. Hey. Oh, she said, yeah, so she <laughs> takes her, she plays the coffee mug. All right. <laughs> Among it's other a great things. Yeah. Um, I, I primarily play the trombone I have for over 20 years. Okay. So she's played the trombone forever. Um, <laughs> but Alfonso, like surprisingly, like we didn't, I never really asked, but it came out in the conversation because of her National Guard shirt. You also served in the National Guard. Yes, I did uh served uh, in the u.s virgin islands national guard sixth and water master quartermaster battalion oh my gosh company. That's, that's so exciting the, i got three three veterans here so <laughs> have any, uh, now have any of you deployed or anything like that as well no i haven't i wasn't able to deploy during my time oh uh, I, was- i've actually done two two deployments in my time okay okay outstanding outstanding i I, I also am a veteran and I've, I've done uh, quite a few deployments and if I don't do any more, I'm okay with it. Um, <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah. you know, it's, it's good to see you guys. And uh, you were in the Virgin islands, Alfonso. Yeah. Born and raised. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> I mean, what, what, what's it like in the national guard in the Virgin islands? I mean, like, uh, uh, is it very I, relaxed? Is it chill? He, uh, at times. At times. Yeah, yeah it, it, it can be. It can be very hectic. Uh, just depends on the day, depends on the person. Yeah, I mean, I always wondered why we couldn't fight in a nice tropical locale. And then, <laughs> and then I, 
I, I've had friends that went to Haiti and said, you really don't want to go to Haiti, <laughs> you know, not, not when there's duress going on, you know, stuff like that. And so, um, well guys, I, I gotta say it's, it's impressive to see what you guys, I mean, musicians plus veterans plus it plus what, what, what do you do Alfonso? What's, what's, what's the day job like for you? Uh, I'm a student right now. Oh, you're a student, That's a full-time student. What a great time to be a student. Of- Cause you're stuck. You can study. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, well, let's see here for each of you. What was the first RPG you ever played? Indie. D and D. I mean, unless you count the fact that I, I play text-based RPGs online. No, we're going to um, stick to tabletop. tabletop yeah, that works. Text-based is good. D&D. I would have to say, I mean, if you want to count it, uh, Hero Quest was probably the first one I did. Hero mm. Quest is a great um, <laughs> board game. Um, um, other than if you don't count that because of a board game, I'd, it'd be D and D. Okay. Okay. Or, or GURPS. I can't remember which one was first. It was either D and D or GURPS. <laughs> <laughs> Does Legend of Zelda count? No, not at all. No. Uh, then is. <laughs> Oh, uh, tabletop. Then it was definitely D and D. Yeah, D and D. Yeah. And how long ago did was that first game for all of you? Last June. Last June. Wow, very, very much a baby at D and D. And and look how far you've come too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for me, it was a few. Uh, it, it was sometime in 2018. I know that. Uh, I guess I'm gonna really show show my age here because I think for me it was either late 80s, early 90s ish. Okay. Okay. Outstanding. <laughs> Outstanding. So uh, was it uh, second edition? Uh, third edition. Advanced D&D? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And uh, we're already getting chat chatter in the chat room about... Uh, <laughs> about GURPS. <laughs> GURPS. Yeah. Yeah. What is GURPS? GURPS is Generic Universal Role-Playing System. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it's a very interesting... It's basically yeah. we can take anything and we can cram it into a role-playing system. It's pretty okay. Yeah, uh, it, but it's 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 a it's very much an older system at this point. It was created yeah. by uh, the same guy who created Munchkin, I think. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, Steve Jackson Games. Yeah, I've got the chats backing me up oh, here yep. too. It's Steve Jackson Games. <laughs> That's the guy who created Munchkin. So, um, so they've I, I, they've created a whole series of stuff uh, that you could play role playing for anything: sci-fi, fantasy, post-apocalypse. I, you I think it. we did one where we were superheroes. They've got a superhero option. I'm sure. Yep. I remember the biggest thing for me when playing it was the fact that GURPS, you only used three six-sided dice, and that was it. Whereas mm-hmm. D&D had seven different, seven different dice to use. Yep, yep. And then you get into Roll Master with all the different charts for everything under the sun, yep. and you can find your eyes glazing over pretty quickly, too. <laughs> yeah. um, and that's, that's always a, 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 a really tough, tough situation. Have any of you DM'd before? Currently, am. Um... Yeah. Alfonso's saying no. No, I have not. Uh, I actually got to sit into the tail end of one of your games, Laura. That was pretty interesting to, to listen in on. Um, oh, the voice yeah. actress doing her, her amazing work uh, <laughs> as she's running her game. Uh, Thank you. And Phil, I know you're running the Wednesday game, which is kind of kind of a cool thing to do in the background, too. Yes, yeah, so I've got the one I'm DMing right now on Wednesdays, and I used to DM back before I quit playing for a while. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, have you guys, I mean, outside of Phil, you guys have all only played really D&D for the most part, or have you tried anything else? I haven't gotten to try anything yet. There are things on my radar. Okay. Okay. Um, is there an RPG that you have not played uh, that you'd like to? Um, all of them. All of them. Okay. <laughs> of them. Alfonso, Alfonso is hooked for life until, until otherwise. <laughs> Um, I wouldn't mind trying Pathfinder, but I am super interested in Star Wars and Numenera. Okay. Numenera is, is cool. And we've done Star Wars here too. Star Wars is pretty cool. Uh, I gotta say, you'll like it. You'll like it. Cool. <laughs> Philip? So, um, then the Star Wars, I've kind of looked, looked into that one a little bit. I was trying to be kind of cool or, uh, what was it? The Vampire Masquerade one? Mm. Oh, Vampire. Yeah. Vampire's yeah, hot. That, that one always kind of called to me a little bit but i never got into it so 
so I just read the the fifth edition vampire book, and uh, I, I've, I'm so impressed with not only the book itself, but they have all these little Easter eggs sprinkled throughout the paperwork that you see in the background. And if you know mm. what you're doing and you look at for it, you can you can find stuff that's interesting in the real world that they mentioned. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, it's pretty cool how they did it. <laughs> they did a great job on it. I was very impressed. Um, so from there, um, for each of you guys, wh which do you think came, I mean, some of you guys are pretty new to D&D, &D, but you were already pretty nerdy gamers. Was, is, would you say that was the case? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> so what came first, you know, was it, was it the nerdy gamer or was it the, you know, did you, did you really think you were a nerdy gamer first or was it the performing side? Cause you kind of all went on a strip, you know, do you guys like to be in front of the crowd? Like, like you are potentially, or how does that work for you guys? So for me, um, I suppose there is an element of liking to be in, in front of the crowd. I mean, uh, going to school as a musician, I had no choice. And then I got into acting and I was like, yeah, I'm on a camera. Yeah, I'm in front of the screen. Yeah, I'm in front of people. Cool. You know, this is not a big deal for me. Anyone else? I wouldn't say, well, I, yeah, I wouldn't say I'd like to be in front of the crowd. I can do it. Uh, I've always saw myself as more of a background kind of guy. Uh, so yeah, I don't, uh, yeah, background. I like to do my work in the shadows. Not much <laughs> comfort to the light. It's, I can, it's possible I can do it. I, it's, it's almost second nature to me, but uh, yeah, I'd rather be more in the background instead of front of the crowd. Okay, okay, good to know, good to know. <laughs> Philip? So for me, I've always actually been uncomfortable being in front of a crowd. Um, I've been kind of forced to, having been a recruiter for the Army for a while, mm -hmm. um, and I've kind of looked at trying to do streaming as a way of forcing myself to put, kind of put myself out there to kind of overcome some of that. Mm-hmm. Is it working? And I think so. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, I do, I'm starting to feel more comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. um, and like I've actually talked to you before, that first session we did, I was, my stomach was turning all over the place. I was nervous. Come the last episode, I was excited. I was ready to go. And now I'm kind of uh, a little, little down that we're not doing that one anymore. <laughs> oh, well, that's so, true. That's true. Yeah. Um, and and uh, you guys are definitely on tap for some new shows that are coming up. Uh, we can't say any more about them and you're under NDA, so you're not allowed to say anything more about them either. Um, so uh, but uh, I'm excited to have each of you guys uh, appearing in new shows as they're coming up. So um, what what would you say if if you could stream any character that you you wanted regardless of, of like the shows and all that other stuff but if you could be any character that you wanted what is the character you've always wanted to play but haven't yet haven't yet mm. kind so of a many. tough one i know oh, yeah, i mean if i pulled up my dnd beyond right now i got 50 characters all ready to go <laughs> oh wow right, right? <laughs> so um that is kind of a tough one yeah, I can't think of a specific personality off the top of my head, but if uh, we was thrown into a situation and said, hmm, this, this, this kind of personality would be good for this situation, then uh, that's probably how I'd come about with the, with the character. Mm -hmm. you, it's situational for you? Yeah, pretty much. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, kind of the same for me. Um, I will say I have not gotten to play a druid yet, and that is uh, one I might like to pull out for for something we do in the future, maybe. A druid? Oh, mm -hmm. that that has some power to it. Yeah. Yeah. I know one of the ones that I've been looking at. Um, I'm kind of right now interested in playing a blade singer. Ooh. A blade singer. Blade singers yeah. are good. They're, yeah. they're a lot of fun. They're kind of new. Uh, so yeah. got a lot of them out there. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. That'd be pretty cool. Oh. How did you guys know you were hooked 
on on TTRPGs, for example, that you you really just love these these games. Oh. So the first time I actually got to play D and D after watching Critical Role, it was in Adventures League. And I got to, I walked into a, the game shop that was holding it and I was super, super nervous. And I was like, well, maybe it won't be so bad when I finally sit down and play. And, and I did. And my first character was this half elf ranger named Amari. And, and I just sat there with her in the first few minutes. I kind of settled into her and then actually started role playing. I was just like, okay, shut off the brain, just turn on the actor part. And after the the game was over, I walked away and I was like, I want to come back tomorrow. (laughs) (laughs) I don't want to wait another week. That's awesome. That's awesome. Did um, what about you, Alfonso? What had me hooked uh, was probably the first stream that I that I was in. Was it the, uh, I think it was the Dead the dead by Daylight module? Dead by Daylight? It was, that's, that, was that the first stream? The first stream that we did was 12 Nights in Barovia. No, the one that I did. Um, oh. With the zombies and the. Dad oh, line. that was the, um, <laughs> the one, the, the one shot, uh, the one page yeah, the one game. Shot. That was um, with uh, D, that was the. Uh, yeah. The zombie apocalypse one. The zombie apocalypse, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a great one, too. Yeah, I've played a few games, uh, local, well, a few games with a, with a group before that stream. Mm-hmm. And I really liked the the role play of it. But after that stream, during that stream, is what really hooked me in, like, with the how the story was built, how I imagined everything going, the theater of the mind, is what really drew me in. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now I'm stuck. Now, now you can't, you got to get your fix, huh? Yeah, okay. definitely. Um, let's, let's go through some fun stuff here real quick. Um, uh, we're going to do ABC, which is kind of a play on uh, ASL, uh, which is what we used to type in the internet way back in the day, you know, age, sex, location, oh, just yeah. so we knew okay. who we were talking to and, and what we were talking to. Uh, and where they were at, right? Uh, so we're going to do ABC, alignment, background, and class. Um, if you if you were a, re- a real life person, which you are, uh, and you had an alignment, <laughs> background, and class, w- what would it be? Uh. Alignment, chaotic, neutral. Okay. And your background? Um, possibly performer a performer or soldier or soldier okay. okay probably a mix of maybe two or three different <laughs> yeah okay yeah. okay and your <laughs> class mm, class uh possibly barbarian or a paladin okay so you either rage a lot or you follow an honor code to its end yeah because it's kind of hard to be a paladin when you're chaotic neutral but you know if anyone can do it you can do it man i've got faith in you (laughs) i'm a walking contradiction yes (laughs) (laughs) aren't we all (laughs) philip what about you um let's see so alignment i'd say probably neutral good Mm -hmm. um background would probably be a mix between soldier and hermit um and then class probably more likely artificer artificer okay yeah outstanding i, I love tinkering i okay. break more than i fix <laughs> this <laughs> is why you're a barbarian brother <laughs> but i but i can also fix you can't yeah you can you're a mechanic yeah. too right that's amazing yeah laura uh alignment would probably be neutral good uh, background. Gosh, I want to say sage. Sage, really? Yeah, because I I love learning just whatever I can, anything, and uh, class definitely a bard. Slight multi class into monk. 
Org yeah. monk. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so you're going to be singing, she was kung fu fighting as you actually do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I could. Okay. Um, if each of you, as your characters walked into a curio shop, what is something that you would find in that curio shop? Tell you Anything. what, each of you, you got a D10 handy by chance? Yes. Uh, all right, roll 2D10 and tell me what your number is. Let's see. So percentile dice, essentially. Percentile dice, okay. Yeah, see, I knew they had dice. You know why? Because yeah. these are real <laughs> players here, folks, real players. Let's see what colors we got. We got the white and gold dice and, ooh. Yeah, it's not whether we have dice, it's which dice... Of is with def def chat, definitely with chat this just movie. asked me to ask the question can you prove you're a real person for the audience please please <laughs> prove that you're real i need you to each to stab yourselves in the finger uh and drip blood no i'm kidding don't do that please don't <laughs> the oh. caltrop no 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 yeah. <laughs> hmm. here we go <laughs> 2d10 2d10 here we go here we go all right uh. Uh, so one and a one. <laughs> one and a one. It's pretty easy to decipher right there. You got a yeah. one ounce block made from an unknown material. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who's next? Putting that on my uh, character sheet. <laughs> yep. Yep. I got an 86. 86. 86 is good. An empty sil silver snuff box bearing an inscription on the surface that says, dreams. <laughs> Interesting. I never figured you for a snuff box kind of person, but you know what? <laughs> the dice don't lie. The dice, dice don't, don't lie. lie. <laughs> mm -hmm. What'd you get, Philip? Uh, 41. 41. 41, 41, 41. Here we go. A scrap of cloth from an old banner, perhaps from your soldiering days. Okay, that's a little awkward. <laughs> Maybe it's from uh, someone else's guide on that you stole at one time. Yeah. Oh, I would never have done that. <laughs> I did lots of times. I'm guilty and I'm perfectly okay with this and I'm not changing for anyone else. I may have swapped some in the past, but too. you know. <laughs> I've done that too. I broke mine once. <laughs> that I never did. I can break it. Was it the screw together kind that fall apart yeah, easy? It, yeah. it was the screw yeah. together kind. It was kind of old. So I was yeah. trying to plant it and I did not pick a good spot. Mm -hmm. Very hard ground. Pop, pop. So yeah. yeah, as it hit, it just snapped. <laughs> oh, luckily, yeah. luckily it snapped uh, where I could unscrew, unscrew it and put it back on, put it back together. So it was a little bit shorter. But <laughs> <laughs> You got That's it awesome. done. For those of you who don't know, a guide on is a, a unit flag. It's a very specific, smaller size that the unit carries around with. It's a point of pride for units uh, to have in, in the military. Uh, let's see here. What's another great question for you guys? Um, are you a god? Depends <laughs> on who you ask. Okay. If you ask the group that plays in my game on Wednesdays, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean... If you are the DM, you are God. So okay. yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> no, no subtlety there. Okay. Good. Good. Um, I want you to tell me what you would each name a tavern randomly. Hmm. Give me each a good tavern name. We add these to a list, by the way. <laughs> oh, hey. Okay. I can use okay, the one good. from my campaign. I'm running the miners' drought. Ooh. The miners what? The miners drought. Ah, I like it. I like it. Anyone else? Um, Who, who's got a good one? Who's got a bad one? Uh, bad one? Yeah. Uh, spleepy, spleepies, splash. Splippy splash. Spleepy, splippies, splash, and. One more verb. Uh, Spleepy, splash, and turn. Tavern. Splash and turn. Tavern. Tavern. Okay. All righty. Spleepy is a turtle. 
Splippy's a turtle. Oh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Makes sense I like now. it. Mm. The bookish fiddler. The bookish mm. fiddler. It's a really not much of a tavern as much as it's a coffee shop yeah. <laughs> where live music is played, you know, occasionally uh, on, on Thursday nights and Friday nights for the, the coffee crowd to, to have their Mastican bean juice every night. It's good. <laughs> all right. All right. I love these tavern names. We're going to put them in our magic list and maybe they'll appear on stream somewhere. Um, <laughs> um Let's see here. Do we get any questions? Guys, if you're in chat and you have questions, feel free to push them up. Just please write, uh, type in question in all caps so that we know that to, to spot those. Let's see what else we got here. Um, let's see here. If you were to have a bag of holding, um, you guys are going to get to roll on a chart. So this is what you're going to find <laughs> in a giant's bag. <laughs> all right. So roll your percentile dice. And we'll start with uh, Laura this time, and we'll see what, what we get here. 14. 14. Uh, Giant-sized drinking horn. It's a horn bigger than you. Hey. Congratulations. Alfonso. <laughs> I'll put the dice away, so now i got to get them back. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you rolling like you did when you were trying to hit in the one game? Game. <laughs> oh when I missed everything, you missed like everything. It, it, it was like five or six ones within a Some single. Of the best combat. riffing ah. I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Greatest roll ever. Uh, Forty. Forty. Uh, let's see here. Forty would be a three-foot-tall idol depicting Grolantor, um from the Hill Giants gods. Mm. Oh. Yeah. yeah. And Philip. Uh, 68. 68. You found a rocking chair. Congratulations. It's mostly <laughs> intact. That's a wonderful retirement gift. That's a yeah, heck exactly. of a bag. <laughs> you know, I ended up with a piece of a flag and now a retirement rocking chair. Lovely. You know, <laughs> it they're just setting you up for failure right there, I think. <laughs> I it, mean, the dice don't lie, like I said. The dice are not lying. Um Let's see here. Um, I'm going to show you a picture of a beast. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm going to tell you I need incorrect names for a beholder. What, what, what is another thing that you would call it besides a beholder? Uh, a giant eyeball. Giant eyeball. Okay. With more eyeballs. Okay. <laughs> a gazer. Okay. <laughs> I think Billis is in chat. He may have heard he that. Is. He yep. may have heard he that. Is. He's he gonna is. love he that. Oh, he's laughing. He's laughing in chat. Yeah. Uh, that's funny. Uh, Winky. Winky. Uh, Winky is good. Winky's good. So, wink. as as some of you guys have have now. Were all of you from now? I know Philip. You just mentioned you were you moved out here to the DC area yep. from Korea, but where where were you from originally? Originally, I'm from Vermont. Vermont. Yeah. Really, the Green Mountain Boy territory. Mm -hmm. Okay. How are the winters? Cold. Um, <laughs> not too bad. Like I grew up with it, so mm -hmm. going having to go out shovel four or five feet of snow was a Saturday. I mean it. Some people mow lawns, you shovel yeah, out five feet of I snow. I shovel driveways. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and so like now I see a quarter inch of snow and people start freaking out. I'm like, eh, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. And Laura, where are you from originally? Uh, so I was born in California, but I've lived in New Mexico most of my life. How are you not extremely tan or sunburned? <laughs> Be because... Um, well, for everybody's one thing, inside all day, uh, eat, isolating. Yeah, yeah, you stay cool by being inside, and okay. if you're an, an introvert, you also like to hermit, and that's me. So, <laughs> okay, you know, okay, Alfonso. Now you you've moved to the D.C. area as well. Yep. What prompted you to move to the D.C. area of all places? School. 
No, uh, my wife is active duty. So okay. she was stationed uh, out at Fort Myers. Yeah, okay. she was stationed out here. So we moved oh. last April. Okay, okay. Yeah. And you followed her out here very dutifully. Yes, definitely. That's, that's awesome, man. That's awesome. And, you know, now that you guys are all where you're at, have you felt pretty good about the gaming communities that you've met in these areas as best you can? I know it's been a challenge the last year. Yeah, as, uh, as much as as much as you can right now. Yeah, I, it's very comfortable. I'm kind of look, I'm kind of upset that uh, that what the what's happening is happening now, because I'm sure that I'd be somewhere at some gathering in a con at a con just having fun but uh yeah well some of the different groups are trying to put on these virtual cons we talked a little bit about that at the beginning of the show today uh and that's been exciting as well so um but um would uh if you could if you could at this point are you are you pretty happy where you're at yeah most yeah. definitely yeah uh, pretty happy pretty comfortable i like the area like everything I've seen so far. <laughs> and Philip, you've, you've elected to retire here in the DC. Yes. Area. Yep. Okay. Um, it's okay. a good area. A lot of good um, IT jobs and stuff in the area. Yeah. Worst um, traffic ever. <laughs> yeah. Worst traffic ever. Traffic's not the greatest, but um, yeah. it's a good balance because I'm far enough away from my family to where they can't stop in when they want, but close enough to be able to go and visit oh yeah the proper coordination yes that so. is that is a high point isn't it yeah for certainly closer than korea yeah. De definitely and yeah and my family is happy that i'm a lot closer now too so yeah yeah and laura would you would you stay in new mexico at this point you're, you're pretty happy there um you know i really love colorado, <laughs> oh, colorado. Okay. yeah my uh, i mean there are places here in new mexico that are gorgeous and it's mostly in the northern part of the state i would move further north i kind of i live kind of along the rio grande in the more arid part of the mm -hmm. state but my sister lives up in colorado around uray which is along the million dollar highway mm -hmm. and it's just gorgeous up there winter sucks but Otherwise, it's uh, it makes me happy to be up there. Outstanding, outstanding. Um, I can understand. I, I actually lived in Colorado for a year. I was in Aurora, just outside of Denver. Uh huh. And the army had put me up there, and it was like going to college because I was in biomedical engineering school back in those days. So, um, very, very intense uh, educational process. But at the same time, on your weekends, after you got past your certain stuff. Uh, after the first 10 weeks, and it's over a year long course when I went, uh, you got your weekends off. So, you know, we'd go up in the mountains and all sorts of other stuff too. So it was, it was a great time to be 19 and, you know, making more money than you ever made in your life before and getting to cut loose on the weekends in, in Denver or in the mountains was just amazing to me at the time. Um, but yeah, Denver, Denver and, and Colorado as a, as a whole, like Boulder is amazing uh place to visit stuff like that so um when when you guys were were given the shot to actually come on to a long-term show which we can admit that you we can say that you guys are all going to be on long-term shows that we're, we're putting together now um was that a surprise for you guys or were you kind of like excited uh and and surprised about that how did that how did that how did you guys take that news Oh, definitely excited on my end, but also slightly worried because I'm like, I, I'm looking for a job right now. And if I get one, I hope it doesn't interfere with that <laughs> because I really, really want to do that. Same here. Same here. Philip? Um, definitely excited. Um, I'm not going to lie. I'm a little surprised that after just the one short shot, um, you guys are ready to take a chance with me. Um, okay, then we won't do it. That's just your social. I mean, why would why should we do that? No, I mean it's I'm 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 excited about it. I'm really looking forward to it. I can't wait. Um, and I know we've been talking quite a bit behind the scenes on what what we're gonna do and where we're gonna go with it. So, mm -hmm. um, I'm definitely looking forward to it. All right, and Alfonso, um, I'm I was very excited. I still am very excited. A bit surprised. I didn't expect it to come 
this quickly. Uh, I, I didn't expect it to come at all, but it came faster than I would have expected it. And uh, I'm really happy that you guys are giving me the chance to join a wonderful cast, wonderful crew. And I'm ready to start role playing. Well, after we saw your your chill tortle, how could we not? <laughs> you know, I mean, the, the tortle was amazing. And then, what was it? You didn't you have a character that was eating everything under the sun? Yeah. In the in the, the zombie yep. game, yeah, yeah. That Every time was, you uh, like, Maxwell I find something Young. else to eat. And you Maxwell Young. Else. Yeah, yeah. Nailed so, the zombie while eating chips. Yep. Yep. So totally chill the whole time too. Totally chill. Um, uh, well, guys, you've done a, an amazing job here. Do, do you guys want to ask each other any questions now that you've got to know each other a little bit too? No? Yes? <laughs> Maybe? Oh. Kind of a wild card, I know. <laughs> we have a question in the chat. I just oh, whoa, we do, we do. What yeah. was the inspiration for your character in Dark Days and Mole Master? So that's actually from one of our fellow cast members on that too. Yeah, because each of you guys did have a unique character. Mm hmm Let's see. So for me, for Erin, she's the second monk I've gotten to play. And I love monks because it's a way for me to revisit the fact that I studied Shaolin Kung Fu for a few years. And so I can use knowledge I actually have about fighting like a monk to play a monk. And so that always, I, I just all wanted to play a monk again. And I knew I wanted to do that, but I also wanted to heal. And the new way of mercy monk that came out in Tasha's um, fit the bill. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna, gonna take that and run with it. Tasha's has been really good at opening up a lot of opportunities and possibilities. That's been pretty, pretty fun to watch. What about you, Philip? So when I first started looking at what we were doing and the whole magic restriction in Mole Master, um, I knew I wanted to play a spellcaster, but I also kind of wanted to play a rogue because I hadn't touched it for a while. So the Arcane Trickster just kind of fell, fell in with that. And then um, the halfling side of it, I just remember back to some of the old books I used to read and how halflings were always just happy-go-lucky, didn't care in the world. And so I kind of really wanted to play around with that. <laughs> I, figured this, I figured this was going to be a good environment to do so. <laughs> <laughs> Alfonso um, so after looking at the setting I decided that uh, Rogue would probably be a great fit and also seeing that how close it was to the moon sea I thought a pirate would be even more fun and would add greater to the Rogue aspect I did not expect him to be the coolest character <laughs> <laughs> but uh <laughs> i'm glad it worked out that way he kind of was though wasn't he he kind of was except he couldn't hit anything uh, could he, not hit anything <laughs> if his life tried uh, he made up for it with the cloak <laughs> yeah yeah that's true that is true and then also you did do the you did spot the guys who were following you 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 actually had that opportunity as well i think so or was that was that you philip no no that was, was alfonso that was alfonso yep yeah. Yeah, I couldn't see anything that day. <laughs> <laughs> um, hold on one second. We're about to pick the winner for the contest. R Stock 2. R Stock 2, congratulations. You have just won the prize. Uh, congratulations. Uh, we are very happy to get you a copy of the... Uh, the uh, Overhead Games Avatar Character Generator um definitely excited to make sure you get that that comes with the fantasy starter bundle plus three uh upgrade packs so you get a whole bunch more character options and clothing options as well for your avatar so pretty cool stuff so congratulations r stockto uh we will hit you up here shortly uh in the chat and make sure that we we understand uh to get you what you need to know so congratulations um well, guys, it's been amazing talking to all of you, and I look forward to seeing you guys more on the uh, Games Tavern Discord and talking to you guys more about that, uh, the different stuff behind the scenes, as well as talking to you in the Discord, just nerding out and goofing off, <laughs> as we all have been the last few days. 
Um, at the same time, uh, you know, if, if you guys ever need any questions answered, you know, obviously you can come onto this chat and ask them um, and harass the, myself, the host, and or Jeff at any time. We love having you guys here. Uh, so um, congratulations once again to our stock two. And with that, guys, we're going to sign off and uh, hang in for just a minute. Uh, after we sign off, we're going to do a quick uh, 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 thank you to our sponsors. And then also we're going to do a quick raid as well. So we'll see you guys soon. Take care, guys. See you next week on the Game Seven Happy Hour, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific.